I was like put in an environment where I had to sort of fend for myself at a very early age. Your birthplace is Zanzibar? Yes, that's right. What were your parents doing there? They were freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were working for the, for the government at the time. My father was working for the government and uh, Zanzibar was part of the Commonwealth at the time. So he was, he was a civil servant and he, he worked over there and uh, there you are. He was born on 5th September 1946. And funny enough, it happened to be on our Parsi New Year's Day. The name we selected for him is Faro. That was his birth name. We used to play different music, uh, Indian music, folk music, English and all that. And he just used to pick up one of the records and start singing about it. So he had a variety of uh, tastes in music. We used to go to functions and parties and um, used to sing, obviously, whenever somebody asked him, he used to sing. And he used to feel so proud to make everybody happy, even at that age. He was sort of interested in the Western music. You'd be playing uh, records and uh, look at the, uh, the fashion magazines and pop magazine to try and see what the, uh, the outside world is doing. When I was about seven, I was put in boarding school in India. So, I mean, I went from Zanzibar to India for, for a while. Farooq Balsara came to St. Peter's as a boarder from Zanzibar. He was good in sports, music, and art. And he soon came to be known as Freddie. When Freddie went around calling people darling, we were sort of terribly shocked, you know, that something was not done. You didn't hear a boy saying darling to another boy. He didn't say it to a girl in public in those days, damn it. So he went going around and say, darling to another boy. Said, We're standing here today on what I consider hallowed ground. Uh, this is the stage and the hall of St. Peter's High School where Freddie first started the hectics. The founder of the group was Bruce Murray. And then Freddie, though, as usual, Farouk was yours on the piano. The three of them got together. He was playing the, the piano. Remove the piano, there's nothing left of the hectics. Live at St. Peter's Panchkane, the Hectic. We started playing amongst in the school first. Then, as Mr. Davis, he is the one who actually encouraged us. All the symptoms were there. Plenty of noise and I should say very melodious. Even people like myself enjoyed their music. He didn't have a stage fright. Otherwise, he would be a shy boy. But when he went on the keyboard, he would be in a bliss playing. And like, I would put it crudely, like getting multiple orgasm. Freddie and the Hectics were, I think, more important to us than Elvis Presley or whoever else. And we were very proud of them. The whole environment, Panjgani, the atmosphere, the climate, the upbringing, it was so peaceful. It gave you a lot of time to cultivate your dream. His dream was to become a musician, which he achieved. And I think that was a very, very nice place to give birth to a star like Freddie. And a nice starting point, I would say. I was in India for, for a while and then came back to Zanzibar. A very upheaval of an upbringing. This is Zanzibar. In the People's Palace, the Council of the Revolution now rules where Sultan Jamshid and his ancestors used to reign. Above the Battle El Jai, now as before the seat of executive government, flies the revolutionary emblem with the white vertical stripe for harmony of the People's Republic of Zanzibar. It was very frightening and everybody was rushing around and didn't know what to do exactly, you know. And because we had young children, we had to decide to leave the country. My first impression of England, I didn't like it 
because it was so cold. And I thought, why did, why did my mom and dad bring us here? We had few uh, known things what to do in England, you know, because we, first of all, we wouldn't have any servants. We had to do things ourselves and eventually we'll have to go out to work to earn a living or something. Uh, so we knew a little bit of background what we were going to expect. Freddie was so excited to come here and kept on saying, we'll all help to get it, Mom, and we'll do it, you know. And uh, that's kept us going. He always kept on telling us uh, that we, we will do something in, in this place because he always loved uh, to come to England. I went through art college, you know, and I was going to be a, a graphics illustrator, you know, I was just, obviously I, know, I can paint and, and do that. He was a great artist, you know, he just line drawings, pencil. Um, had this. Uh, had this whole catalogue of stuff. Um, Hendrix, he did so, you know, a load of pictures of Hendrix, which were brilliant. Ealing School of Art at that time, of course it produced Pete Townsend, Ronnie Wood. It had a tradition of producing, you know, good musicians. He used to talk about that, that so many people from art college have done music pop music, and I didn't take much notice of that at that time, thinking it's one of those things, let us see. <laughs> the moment I finished that and, and I finished college, I, um, my interests were in music. I, all I wanted to do was music, so I set upon the fact that, oh, no, I'm going to try and make it as a singer. I can remember uh, you telling me that your mom and dad, when you first started out, were not too happy about your that, choice, that, choice that of that career. In itself, that in itself instilled me in, into, into thinking that it, it should be right. I mean, I, most of the best of the key figures or whatever always had a rebellious upbringing or whatever. You know, you've got to rebel somewhere. I mean, I just, I just rebel all the time. That's why it's made me into such a fiend. We don't have 